Sine, cosine, tangent, sequence of cotangent. Um, that goes all down. So get ready for it. Remember, sine without the theta doesn't mean anything. So make sure you write more theta. Okay? Um, Right, sine without a theta, it's like writing square root without something inside the square root. It would make any sense. Okay. So, um, how many of these can we fill in with the information we do have right now? None? One. Two. Two. One. Two. 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 So, many name one. O, D's, O's. Five. The no. tangent of the curve? No. 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 Sine and cosecant. Yeah. What's the sine of this angle is the we talked about this last time? No. A nice little scene sign sounding kind of a thing, kind of rhyme, so there's two of us. So the sine of this angle, of any angle, is the opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. So nine over fifteen. Cosecant is, what's it, how's it related to the sign? The inverse, the multiplicative the inverse, the reciprocal. So then the cosecant of theta would be? Five times Okay, now how many can we fill in now that we fill in those two? Um, right now, the very moment we can fill in. No. Okay, so how, we, we have to find this side, right? This side, let's call it A. How do we find it? Staggering theorem, a squared plus 9 squared equals 15 squared. a squared plus 81 equals 225. a squared equals 1, uh, 144. For the square root of both sides, we make a 12. What's the cosine? Solving a triangle means finding all of its sides and all of its angles. So uh, D is 40, we can fill that in. Uh, F is 8. Um, that's all. E is 50. Uh, is Thank you. 
Double check and make sure of what? Uh, yeah, degree mode. Let's look at the mode. Degree mode. Okay. And then hit enter. 6.1 E. E is about 6.1. Do the same thing with 40 degrees. The sine of 40 degrees. What, Anthony? Uh, P over 8. Multiply by 8. Cancel that. 8 times the sine of 40. This is being refreshed. And I guess the question is how many of you you know what the question is? Uh Mr. Cast Shadow Shown with approximate height of the person. So you could have any number of things here. A building could be there, so the person uh, instead of a shadow it could be So now we're just going to be kind of exacting, like surgical, use exactly the right um, shriek function that involves the variables and the notes. Tangent, the tangent of, I'm assuming 16 degrees, equals. Seen this happen before, like you see 16 and a 16 degrees, a really common trig function is the sine. So maybe we'll just do the sine of that number. Well, they're different. If I were to use the sine of 16 degrees, yeah, if you, if you want this to be the thing you don't know and solve for it, then you should know what the hypotenuse is, but you don't. Right? You have a H. You know, either one of those things. Right? So we don't want to involve trig functions that use values, too many values that we don't know. Too many values that are unknown. change the degrees. I'm going to strongly suggest to the point that whenever I do a problem, I don't do that. Suggest that you not do that. Because you know? rather than converting it to the old ways that you are familiar with, you're better to get familiar with something new. So, but that, if you do that in your head, if you convert it to degrees, then plot the degrees, and then write it down, this is five power before crazy. I'm not going to know the difference, but it's going to delay the time that we take to learn the game. So how are we going to manage this? Like, 
how did he get to number five title before him? Other than the degrees is one pi and one pi. You can take that as four four pi and oh good. That's four pi over four. The four is cancel with just pi. That's good. So um and, uh, one fourth of hundred and eighty is forty five degrees. Uh, yeah. Okay. Kind of uh, still put it back into degrees, but uh, We recognize that pi over 4 is just, if, if this is pi, from here to there is pi, then pi over 4 just be a fourth of that way. So if we come all the way over here, that's 4 pi over 4, we just need to go one more pi over 4. Anytime you have an angle and radius to sketch out and figure out where it is, just count it out. Okay? Here's what I mean. Here's the, the x and y axes. You say I want, uh, I'm going to sketch out 37 pi over uh, 13. Well, figure out how big a pi over 13 is, 1 pi over 13, and then figure out what 37 of those would be. Okay. So how big would a pi over 13 be? This is pi. How far would pi over 13 be? 13, 13, right? Like, how far would this be in pi over 13? Yeah. What's that? Six and a half thirteens, right? Six and a half thirteens to get to there. How about there? That's 13 pi over 13. Let's go all the way over here. How far would that be? How many thirteens would that be? We need to get to 30. Let's take it all the way over here. How far would that be? 26. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So do what? So mm -hmm. So we go all the way around once. That would be 26. Mm -hmm. And then we do it another half of a rotation. We get 39. Mm -hmm. 37. It's just too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. So you know, we're somewhere in here. And if you're counting on 13, so I'm not going to ask. If you're close enough to the correct axis, that's the best thing to ask for. Somewhere in there, and the only other thing that we have to show is we went all the way around and that much more. And that's 37 miles. Okay. Okay. multiply by a fraction that has both units in it, canceling out one unit and leaving the other. Uh, and the only thing is in that fraction, in that ratio, both of those units have to be equivalent to each other. 12 inches to one foot, uh, 5,280 feet to one mile, 3 feet to one yard, uh, 1,000 millimeters to one meter, whatever it is you're converting. The numerator and denominator have to be equivalent to each other. You multiply this, fraction where it cancels out the degrees and leaves us with radian. How many degrees and how many radians? High radians. High radian. Mm -hmm. What are we multiplying this by essentially? What, what is this equal to? If we divide this by that, what am I going to get? I'm going to divide something that's equal to that thing, I get 1. I'm really just multiplying 135, negative 135, by the number 1. And it doesn't change the value of it at all. It just converts it to a different unit. So the degrees get canceled out. See if 35 and 180 get it out.
going negative, negative which, which does that mean, negative and negative angle? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's the yeah. other way? What's the way and what's the other way? Uh, okay. Which one is it? Which one's positive? Counter, okay. Which is kind of counterintuitive. Okay. Counter is whatever. Okay, so this way's positive, this way's negative. 135, let's see, that's 90, that's 80, 135, right there. Negative 135. And negative 345 or 4. Converting negative pi over 18. Exactly the same thing, except for exactly the opposite. We're going to cancel out the radian. Remember, we cancel out pi? No, that's not the point. The point is to cancel out the unit radians, which hardly ever gets written down. Like, you don't you really write radians. Uh, you kind of specify it in the context of the problem. You can certainly down, write down radians so it's clear that we're canceling out the radians as a unit. Those cancel out. You got 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Well, pi and pi are the same number, it's dividing itself, so it does also cancel. You know, 180 divided by 18 you got negative 10 degrees. Does that seem reasonable? Mm -hmm. Negative pi over 18? be fairly small in the negative direction. We're not being very exact, I'm just asking, does it seem reasonable? Well, it's pi over 18, is that going to be very far? 10 degrees is not going to be very far. Yeah, that seems to make sense. I think I did my math right. Just a quick little check. Okay. Well, that's the last one for the review. Are there any questions from that? Do a good job on it? Like, 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 job. like you know, because of passion or because of know-how? I want to be a good job. I'm asking you, are you qualified for the job? Uh, no. I can do it if people want to I'm asking you, do it. I'm asking if you can get hired. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you can quit right away. I just want you to, to be able to get the job. I don't know who the expert is. So I'm going to give you these uh, unit circles I told you I would, and now I am. And uh, these unit circles, I still have some calculus students who have their, calcul their, their unit circles from this day, the day, today, that I passed them out of the two. Okay? So held on to them for that long, they're that useful. So, do some more today. But if you become a professional, you're going to want to still have this. Is that a chance? Chance is going for that. Going for that.
Hold on. Don't, don't get right into it. Because we got, we got lots of information that we want to put on here. Okay? So we, wanna, we want to organize it so that we don't get too cramped. All right? So you really have to reach out to them. And then what I'm going to say is... What? I would say write them maybe here, inside, zero degrees, 45 degrees, and you're right here, 90 degrees. How many degrees would you guess this is? A little common angle. 30, 30, 30, 60. the same ones, like maybe just on the other side of where you have the degrees written. I want you to also fill out the radians. So what about 90? How many radians is 90 degrees? One half of the radian. Um, two. How about 45? One fourth, pi over four. you go all the way around, and we're just going to fill those in. They have more information that we're going to put on this unit circle. We're going to start with the degrees and the radian. So all the other angles around are, you know, like from here to there is, is 30 degrees, or maybe from here to there is 60 degrees, however you would think of it. But don't write 60, right? How many degrees is it from here to there? Here, all the way around to there. I want the degrees and the radians from here to there, wherever that is. But like this is from this is 60 degrees from the horizontal, this is 45, this is 30. It's certainly you're capable of figuring out what all of those degrees are. Wow. You look on that for a minute, I'll come around. See if you can okay. It looks like most of you have the uh, degrees down and you're working on the radians. So, let's talk about this. Think about this. Um, well, this is pi radians. We just start there. That's why we can look at this guy and say, pretty simply, this is half of pi. It's half of the pi is pi divided by two. Same here, this is a third of the way to pi, so it's pi divided by three. This is a fourth of the way, this is a sixth of the way. Okay. So, if you notice, like, in the degrees, every other angle that's marked on here is in some way a multiple of 30, 45, 60, or 90. Right? So we can use the radians in the same way and just kind of count it up how many of these pieces of a rotation am I using to get to this place. For instance, let's, let's even start with pi over 6. Is 30 degrees, another 30 degrees gets to 60, right? Mm -hmm. 30 and another 30 is 60. Well, that's pi over 6. And another pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 6s. Right? That's 2 pi over 6. But we say pi over 3 because the 2 and the 6 can cancel, we get pi over 3. The same idea, I can do a pi over 2 and 2 pi over 2 gives me a pi. If I do pi over 3, if I went another this sized angle, another pi over three, where would that put you? Another pi over so three, pi over three, and another oh, pi over no, three. No. Which would where? So a pi over three and another pi over three gets you to 135. Mm -hmm. 
How big is pi over 3? It's the same as 60, right? If I go to the pi over 3, it'd be the same as the one another 60. So, so how many pi over 3s is this? 2, two pi over 3. Right? If we split this up, this is 2 thirds. 2 thirds of pi. 2 thirds times pi. It's 2 thirds of pi. It's that much of pi. So there's pi. Makes sense. This is 2 thirds of the way. Multiply 180 by 2 thirds, they get 120. Multiply pi by 2 thirds, they get 2 thirds pi. Two pi over 3. This is pi over 4. Where's another pi over 4 getting? Mm -hmm. Pi over 4 and another pi over 4. 2 pi over 4. Mm -hmm. 90, yeah, which simplifies pi over 2. How about another pi over 4? 35. How many pi over 4 is in that? 3. 2 pi over 4 is 3 fourths of the way oh. to pi. Yeah, this would be how many pi over 6? Six? 6 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6, which simplifies the pi. Which means that we know that this is 30 degrees. 30 degrees is pi over 6. That's how many radians it is. We only need one more to get to 6 pi over 6, so it's going to be 5 pi over 6. And one more would get us to 6 pi over 6. And one more would get us to 7 pi over 6. And one more than that would get us to what? 8 pi over 6? Which is 4 pi over 3. This simplifies 4 pi over 3. Which means it's also 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3. So this is 8 pi over 6. Pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Another pi over 6, that's 7, 8, 9. Mm -hmm. 10 pi over 6. Oh. So you simplify to 5 pi over 3. Which means it's pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4, pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. Okay, that was 10 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6. 12 pi over 6, which simplifies to 2 pi. Okay, so these would be multiples of pi over 4, right? Yeah. You got pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, again, 3 pi over 2, and 7. 7 pi over 4, and then 8 pi over 4, which is in pi over 5. Does that help you out a little bit? A little, a little bit more sense out of radius? Yep. Okay. point where you hear radians and you can quickly convert these common radians into degrees, then you'll be in good shape. Um, that'll make that you may be fully functional, able to do the things that we need to do. And if you're able to, if I gave you, you know, again, 37 pi over 13, you should be able to figure out where that is because you know what's going on here with radians, but this is a pi, single pi radians, 3.14 radians, this is 2 pi. Okay. Second to start on what the unit circle is, the only other thing about the unit circle that we want to specify is that if it's a unit circle, That word units, it refers to like 
what you're measuring in. You're measuring in uh, feet. Feet is the unit. Measuring in miles. Miles is the unit. Measuring gallons. Gallons is the unit, right? Now, the unit here is, is not specified. It's the, like one unit, circle. So when it says unit, it's referring to one, like a single unit. And that single, that one, is referring to the radius. So the unit circle is a circle with a radius one. So if you were asked for like the definition of a unit circle, the unit circle would be a circle with a radius of one unit. So let's say you don't have to write this down if you don't want to, but I want to be, want to be clear that when I'm saying the radius in this circle. If you make the radius of the circle one, then all these, like it makes it really useful when we're talking about trig values, sine, cosine, tangent, all that kind of stuff. So if you want, it's, it's up to you, you might want to write over here to the side, radius gives you one, or if it just sticks in your mind, you can add one. That's great too. All that works great. Um, So these, these guys here are going to be like the coordinates of the points around the circle. The x value and the y value. x value, y value. x value, y value. Of the points around the circle. Does that make sense? Now, we know a couple things about each of these points. We know what angle it's at, and we know that it's one away from the center because the radius of the circle is one. Okay. So, let's see if we can figure out where this point is, horizontally and vertically, on this, this circle, on the outer edge of the circle. Here's how I will. So if I draw a line straight down at a 90 degree angle, then what have I just made? A triangle. I made a triangle here in this area. Um, what is this angle right here? 30 degrees, good. This is 90, that's 30, this is 60 if you like, but the thing is we, of course, want this to somehow be in reference to 30 degrees. Can you tell me how long this side is, maybe? Remember, the other thing that you know is how long this side is. How long is this side? Mm -hmm. This is 30. This is 60. This is 1. Right. Can you solve for this side? Right. We just did some of this on the mm -hmm. review, right? Solving for this side. The sine of 30 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side we'll call y. Y over 1. Well, that's why it's so convenient that we made the radius 1, because it's y over 1. It's y. y divided by 1 is y. So the sine of 30 is y. So like once we write this down, we'll, what we'll have in the y position is the sine of 30. We'll, we'll reference the lab. Does anybody know what the sine of 30 degrees is? Is that? I'm going to write one half. 
the right of the fraction. Well, how about finding this side from here to there? The cosine is the sine. Cosine of 30 degrees is equal to x over the cosine of 30 is x. And we talked about this last time. We talked about the cosine the sine of 30 and 45 and 60 and all those guys. Do you remember what the cosine of 30 is? Well, on our unit circle, we're going to write the exact value. You guys have any notes from the other day that we built in those tables called the sine cosine So imagine that you went back and looked at those, you would find Well, if you get the same setup for 45, you're going to have a similar thing happen. We're going to have a triangle here with an angle of 45 down here. We're going to set it up and say the sine of 45 is y over 1. Yeah, so the y value will be the sine of 45. The sine of 45, if you look at the note, squared is 2 over 2. The cosine, also squared is 2 over 2. And over here, and then we talk about this triangle right here, meaning this is x and the y coordinates of this point. So the y coordinate is going to be the sine, sine is squared two over two, and the cosine is one half. Let's go to 90 degrees. And now switching, kind of switching back to the coordinates of that point. Where is that point? What are the x and y values of that point? Zero, 1. It doesn't go anywhere in the horizontal. It just goes straight up. And we know that the radius is 1. sine is the y value, the cosine is the x value, the sine of 90 is 1. And the cosine is 0. Right. Now at this point, at 2 pi over 3, or 120, 120 degrees, Where is that point? Given all the work we've already done, and that each of these coordinates are like reflections of each other, what's the x and the y of that point right there at 120 degrees? No. Yeah, so the left of the y-axis is negative, yes? Yeah. And how far away from the y-axis would it be? Say it's 30? Yeah. No, no. Up here. Yeah. Yeah, 
they straight across from each other? Yeah. They would be, they would have the same vertical. Well, why? Negative root term two? No. Oh, and then the x is negative root term two. The x is negative, yeah. it's the left, negative. but it's still up, so the y is positive. Negative. So negative one. Negative one half positive root term two. So, what's the cosine of 120 degrees? Sign of 120 and the sine of 120 degrees. Root two over two. Okay, so we can follow this pattern, like, but let's do it for 135. Where is this point? Negative root two over two, right? It's, it's an exact mirror image of this point right here, so it would be negative root two over two in the x direction. And still positive root two over two in the y direction. We can follow that like pattern and reflecting into the proper quadrants uh, and and fill all of these in, and that would be fine. Okay. So I'll just really quickly, and it may stick with you, and it may not. And if it doesn't stick, it's not going to be a killer. But remember that I said that like in this triangle, this is a right angle and this is say theta. Then we talk about uh, the vertex of the angle and this point right here. Like the sine, for example, is really just saying like how far vertically is this point divided by how far straight from this point to that point. And so how far vertically is it between this point and this other point? Uh, divided by versus how far is it just straight in a straight line from this point to So it's not just inside of the triangle. You don't have trig values just inside of the triangle. It's not just opposite of right hypotenuse. For example, here. Here's the vertex of the angle. And here's the point out here. So the sine is a measure of the vertical over the straight line between the two points. So the vertical In that way, it accounts for like the negative values that we find in some of these quadrants. So in the end, what we do is we expand out for every angle. Like every angle has a sine, cosine, tangent, and so on. Um, for most cases. Uh, and we can find all of them by filling out this unit circle and just following the pattern. So this guy right here would be up here, and then this one over here. So it would be to the left, square root of 3 over 2, so it would be negative. Negative square root of 3 over 2, and up 1 half. Negative square root of 3 over 2, and up 1 half, just like that guy just goes that way. Now this one would be very similar. X value would be negative. Negative what? One half. Negative one half, you think? Isn't this one negative one half? Isn't that a little further than that? Is that? Negative root zero. It's just as far to the left as this is. Yeah? So negative square root of zero two.